Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Javier, this is Melanie, Jacob, Alex, and Katie. And we are the Happy Pets, Happy People, following the Pets for Life program. So show of hands, who in here has a pet or knows of a family or friend that owns a pet? Be most of us. Uh, what does a pet make you feel? If you think about it or take a moment to think about it, some of us don't see pets as just animals. We see them as family or friends. Or what do you see your pet as? Family. Family. See, and we, we think that everybody should have that connection, should have that pet, and should feel that family member in their life. And there are many benefits to having and owning a pet. For example, uh, in a study done by the UK, they found out that pets uh, reduce stress, reduce anxiety, boost the person's mood, and also increase their activity, and also that it prevented their loneliness because they had that companion next to them. And also a, bit, a great impact that they had, and they saw at their program and campaign, they saw that they had more socialism. A lot of people would go out and act, do activities with their pet, or feel intrigued by talking to other people about their pet. So, and in accordance to that, uh, an article posted by the Huffington Post, uh, according to them, the power of empathy, was a uh, research done, a groundbreaking research done, uh, that involved juveniles at a correction facility, and they gave the juveniles dogs, and saw how they, how they reacted to the dogs after a couple weeks. And they saw that the juveniles had a decrease in uh, self-serving behavior, and self-centeredness. Self and they saw that increase in empathy. And with that empathy, we want, to great, we want to create that empathy for other people so they learn how to sustain a pet and also be more human. Because what they saw with that groundbreaking study was that us as human beings were losing that, we're losing that uh, to be human to one another as to be uh, better for one another in society. And that's where we see our yin and yang as pets and humans interacting with each other and being happy together. That's why we should be, we should have those happy pets and those happy people combined. And right now in the United States, one in six Americans are living in poverty and 60% of those Americans at least have one pet in their family. So we think that those low income, uh, those low income people need that pet and sometimes need that assistance that we will give to them uh, so they can keep their pet and keep integrating into society because with that pet, as I said before, they will feel intrigued in society and also it will prevent them from being lonely and they will integrate more in society which will better the community. And Melody will explain more our problem. Okay, so our main problem is that low income families um, want pets and could need the help from pets but they can't afford all the costs to take care of it so we see this cycle of adopting a pet, the realization that you can't afford the pet, and then rehoming it or giving it back to the homeless shelter. And um, so, and we talked to Missy Mosby from the Evansville Rescue Mission, and she said that this is a cycle that has been going on and it overpopulates their shelters. And so it's just really frustrating and sad to deal with. And so we think that having happy pets, happy people, we could help those low-income families. And now Alex. Happy pets, happy people target low-income families who may have trouble taking care of their pets by themselves. Um, they will go door to door to establish uh, a community presence and to build relationships with those families. Um, this implements phase one of our plan, which is spaying and neutering. We, we contacted a rescue over in St. Louis and they have a very similar program and they have been highly successful with that. They have spayed and neutered tens of thousands of animals within the past couple of years. Um, and by doing this, this will promote the um, overpopulation in the animal shelters, making that decrease. And we think Evansville is a great place to introduce this program just because of the number of potential volunteers, students in um, sororities, fraternities, and any other organizations that may need hours um, would volunteer out with um, HPHP. And now Katie will tell you about the opportunity size. Our primary target customer is humane societies. There are only three humane societies in the in Evansville. Happy Pets, Happy People will help these humane societies from becoming overpopulated by spaying and neutering the animals in the community. Um, the program will benefit the humane societies, low-income families, and the animals. The low-income families will now be able to use the service even though they think that they can't afford to have a pet. The poverty rate in Evansville is 21.7% in 2017, and so we 
we have targeted two zip codes in Evansville, and we targeted those based on demographics, education, and employment. And so anybody in those two zip codes will be able to use the Happy Pet Happy People services. So what we will tell them what they're doing now. So what's being done now to um, help our problem is health pet insurance, um, payment plans, care credit, crowdfunding, and grant options. And with pet health insurance, it doesn't cover all breeds. It doesn't cover um, if they're older. It doesn't cover any pre-existing conditions. And even if you could get it to cover your pet, it would only cover a percentage of the bill, so you'd still have a bill to pay. Uh, payment plans and care credit has a lot of interest tagged onto it, so you'll be paying more than what you were already having to pay and it just brings them more into debt than they already are. And crowdfunding and grant options is just a long process of just waiting for money and you might not even get it in the first place. And so we're adding value by giving those services free to people that need it and connecting those relationships with them so they feel comfortable with us taking care of their pets for them. So we're going to take a look at the uh, business model canvas. Um, as Alex mentioned, we're going to be implementing phase one, which is uh, spaying and neutering. Uh, we are going to key partners are going to be uh, with veterinarians. Uh, we talked to a couple of local veterinarians that said that uh, they would be interested in helping as long as they were anonymous. Uh, the other partner that would be key in phase one would be the uh, Pet, uh, Pet Smart Charities a grant from them, uh, we can get a, a van, which is what we're wanting to do, and take the van and fill it with supplies needed to uh, spay and neuter these animals and the two zip codes that Katie talked about, and take those, take the van and help those animals and also help the people that can't afford to get the animal spayed and neuter, which is gonna also help the overpopulation of humane societies. Uh, tens of millions of uh, people around the United States are uh, living in poverty with pets, and 87% of those pets are not spayed and neutered. So we think that Evansville would be a good place to bring this type of program to. Um, we'll have multiple phases going through, but first we're gonna beta test phase one and see if it's gonna work in this area and see what else needs to be done after that. Uh, thank you for listening.